Hi, this is Aswad the Motrin, and I'm glad you're with me today because what I'd like to talk about today is usually considered a dry topic, but it's something that we need to kind of get our hands around when we think about valuing publicly traded companies or any business. When you do valuation, one of the fundamental rules you have to follow is every single input you use has to be the most updated number you can get for that particular input. Now, for some numbers, you can get, get that updating done constantly. So if you're looking for stock prices or risk-free rates, those numbers get updated constantly in the marketplace. So looking up the most recent number is not a big deal. But most of our inputs and valuation come from accounting statements. And accountants don't update financial statements every minute of every day, not even every day. In fact, in the U.S., they do it once every three months. And outside the U.S., it might be once every six months or even once every year. So the challenge we face when you value a company is how do you take those financial statements and try to get them as updated as you can. Key thing to remember is you got to work with what you have. You can't hope, I mean, you, you, you cannot create information that's not there. So I'd like to take a company and take you through the process of updating the numbers and provide maybe a couple of guidelines that might be useful when you start updating companies. So here's a valuation of Apple that I was trying to do on October 3rd of 2012 basically right now. Now here's the problem I faced. I have the market numbers for Apple, the stock price today, uh, the interest rates today, but Apple has this, uh, an October to September fiscal year. You think this is great, the most recent 10K must have just come up. The most recent 10K ends September 30th of 2012, but it's not going to be out to probably mid-November. And here I'm in October trying to value the company. I could play dumb and use the most most recent annual report at 10K, but remember that ended September 30th of 2011. Those numbers are old numbers. For a company like Apple, which is changing fairly dramatically on a month by month, quarter by quarter basis, that's going to give me a valuation that really is meaningless given where the stock is today. So what I decided to do was create trailing 12 month numbers, updated numbers as far as I could uh, as far as I could go with each of the inputs. Now, one of the things I try to do in valuation is rather than distract myself by estimating numbers I'll never use, I start with a spreadsheet I use in valuation and basically decide what numbers I need, you know, the updated values for. So this is my standard valuation spreadsheet. So basically, you see the inputs I need to value a company on the, le on the, column, on the left column and the numbers I have to enter. What you see there are my updated numbers and I'd like you to take through the process of how I came up with those numbers as of today with Oct in October, on October 3rd of 2012. So the two basic documents I downloaded to get these updated numbers was the most recent 10k for Apple. I know I told you it was old, it was September 30th of 2011. I still need it. And the most recent 10q which was June 30th of 2012 and it covers the first three months of Apple's fiscal year. So let me pull those two documents up so you can see what they look like. There's the 10K and there's the 10Q. So I'll set them to the side because I will be pulling numbers out of both those documents to create my trailing 12 month numbers. So there's a worksheet. If you look to the bottom of the spreadsheet, there's a worksheet that says trailing 12 month with the inputs that I've copied out from the first page. Now before I start talking about the updating process, I have to draw a distinction between three sets of numbers. One, of course, are those market numbers, where I'm not going to use the 10K or the 10Q to get those numbers. I'm going to try to get them out of the marketplace today. The second are what I call flow numbers. Flow numbers are numbers in the income statement and the statement of cash flows. They reflect what happened over the course of the year. Examples would be revenues, income, capital expenditures, depreciation, all those line items you get out of the income statement and the, and the statement of cash flows are flow items. And then you have stock items. Basically, these are the items in the balance sheet, cash, uh, book value of equity, book value of debt. And the reason I'm differentiating between flow and stock items is the way in which I'll update the numbers is different for the flow items as opposed to, this, to the stock items. In fact, there are only two big flow items I need in my valuation. I need an updated number for revenues and I need an updated number for operating income. So let me start with the revenue number and let me start with the 10K. So what you see in the, in the, in the second column there, 108,249, is the revenue in the most recent 10K. So there's a 10K, it's on page 45. So let me go to page 45 and you see that 108,249, those are the revenues. In that same page you see the operating income of 33,790. So there you have the two numbers. 
Then I went to the 10Q. And if you look at the 10Q on page 3 of the 10Q, you see the revenues for the nine months ending June 30th, 2012, and the nine months ending June 30th, June 25th. I guess that fiscal year, that quarter ended a little early, 79, 979. So the nine months of first nine months of 2011 was 79,979, and the first nine months of 2012 were 120,542. Here's how you create the trailing 12 month number. It's not rocket science. I'm going to take the last 10 K's numbers. I'm going to subtract out the first nine months of 2011 and add the first nine months of 2012. It's a quick and dirty way. Of, it's actually not even a dirty way. It's a quick and precise way, actually, of getting the 12-month numbers. That's what you see in this column as the trailing 12-month revenue. I do the same thing for operating income. I take the operating income from the last 10K, subtract out the 25,414, which is the operating income for, let me fix that, 25,514, okay, which is the operating income for the first nine months of 2011, and add the first nine months of 2012, which is 44,870. So 33,790 operating income, I'm sorry, that's, I think I've, I've highlighted the wrong numbers there. Let me fix these again. 45, my original numbers were in fact my right numbers. Shows you can get sloppy. 40, so basically this should go back to being 25,080 and 44,297. So basically, if you take 33,790, subtract out the 25,080, add the 44,297, you get the updated or the trailing 12-month numbers. Those are what I'm going to use as my current numbers. Now, your response might be they're not current. We're in October. Now, I have no way of making up the last three months. So basically, I've taken the trailing 12-month number, even though it's June 30th of 2012, and acted as if it's the most updated value that I can get for revenues and operating income. I'll tell you, if you, if you feel uncomfortable, doing that because it's been three months since the end of the last quarter. One way you could get an even more updated number is if you're willing to make an approximation of what happened in the last quarter. And I'm not quite ready to do that. So I'm going to stay with those trailing 12-month numbers through the end of June 2012. Now let's get to the stock numbers. These numbers are going to come from the balance sheet, which is on page 4. Okay, So basically, I'm going to start again with the 10K. Okay, so let me go to the 10K. And in the 10K, if you look at page 46, you'll see cash. And Apple has this strange practice of spreading its cash out in three places. That is cash and cash equivalents, short-term marketable securities, and long-term marketable securities. You add those up, you get a total cash balance. You see the three numbers added up? That's a cash balance as of the last 10K. Now, when I do my 10Q, I can get the cash balance as of the last 10Q if you if you open up the 10Q on page 3. Actually, on page 4, I guess, of the 10Q, you see cash, equivalents, and long-term marketable securities. You add those three numbers up, you have a 10Q. Notice I'm not doing anything for 2011 because when you have a stock, all you care about is how much cash you have at a point in time. You don't care about the intermediate periods. So I'm pretty much done. That 117,221 is my updated value. And while I'm on the 10Q balance sheet, I can al also pull up the total shareholders equity, 111,746, okay, which is what you see there. And we'll come back to the book value debt because the conventional debt is actually zero both in the 10Q and in the 10K. So if you if you look at the 10K there, you'll see the shareholders equity for the most recent 10K and the 10k to be 76,615. Let me highlight that number and there's no debt. Now you might wonder what the what what is this debt number that you see here? I treat lease commitments as debt and if you look at page 74 of your 10k you'll see the lease commitments for Apple for the next five years and beyond. You see that you see that listed out there. I'm sorry. So lease commitments for the next five years and a lump sum beyond, and there's the lease commit payment for the last period. So I've entered those numbers from page 74. Okay. Now, I would like to get updated values for that, for the most recent 10Q, but here's the problem I faced. If you go to the 10Q, 
and you search for lease commitments, there's actually no information on the breakdown of lease commi commitments by year. And that's not unusual. In fact, most companies don't provide the lease commitments in the 10Q. I did get lucky for Apple, though, because somewhere in the 10Q on page 20, they did tell me that their total lease commitments as of June 30th of 2012 were 4.1 billion. In other words, they've given me the sum, but they haven't given me the breakdown. Now, when you do valuation, you will, you will run into this problem frequently. There'll be gaps in the information. You've got to make your best estimate. So here's what I have. If I take the present value of the lease commitments at the start of the most recent year, the most September 2011, I had the full commitments, and I computed the present value of the lease commitments, the value that I got was 2,513. That's what you see as my debt as of the last 10K. I don't know the individual commitments by year as of June 30th of 2012, but I do know that the total commitments went from 3,032 to 4,100. So here's effectively what I did. I took the book value of debt, the lease commitment debt, which is the only debt that I have as Apple, 2005-13-34, and I scaled it up to reflect the fact that my total leases, in this case, had gone up from 3,032 to 4,100. Now, many companies, you will not even get that minimal information. And you have two choices. One is you can stay with the lease commitments as of the most recent 10K and say it couldn't have changed very much. Or if you want to be a little more daring, you can take the change in revenue between the last 10K and your trailing 12-month number. And in this case, that works out to about 40% and increase your book value of the, the debt commit, the lease commitment by 40%. So in this case, if I'd used that approach, that would have added another billion. So instead of getting 3,398, I'd have got about 3.5 billion, pretty close to the number I'd have actually got. But my suggestion is don't be... No, don't be uncomfortable making assumptions. Sometimes you'll get a better estimate making assumptions than staying stuck with the number from the most re recent period. Now we're almost all there. There, if you look at page forty-six of the ten K, you know I'm going to go back to the ten K here. You go back to page forty-six of the ten K. They tell you the number of shares outstanding, and you can see it at the bottom of the page. They tell you the number of shares. I'm actually it should be the page the previous page. 924258. Forget about the diluted. It's, it's really, you want the basic number of shares, 924258. If you go to page uh, to the 10Q, that number was updated 936.596. But with the number of shares, I actually was able to get an even more updated number because if you go to Yahoo Finance or Morningstar or whatever your preferred choice is to get data and you look up Apple, you get an actual number of shares as of right now. And remember the rule, you want to get the most updated information. So what I'm going to use for my number of shares is actually the number that I pulled off this fi these finance sites is the number of shares outstanding right now. Same thing with the stock price. I really don't care what the 10K or the 10Q reported stock price is. I can get an updated price now. One final input, I need a tax rate. And the way I usually compute the tax rate is I take taxes paid and divide by taxable income. So if you look in, in the in the most recent 10K, page 45, you'll actually see taxable provision for tax is 8,283. So I'm going to highlight that. And taxable income, 34,205. And based upon those two numbers, the tax rate I get is 24.22%. Now if I go to my 10Q and do the same thing on page 3 of the 10Q, And I do the taxable income and provision for taxes in 2011, I get 24.06 and 25.32%. Now, when you work with percentages, you get a little more leeway. You don't have to add and subtract, and you can make a judgment as to what you want to use. For instance here, I could have computed a trailing 12-month tax rate. I could have used the last 10K tax rate. I could use the first nine months of 2012 tax rate because it's a rate. It's not going to get higher or lower just because I consolidate. So in this case, I actually chose to use the first nine months of 2012 as my basis for the tax rate. That's a decision I made. You could choose a different, you might make a different choice with your, you know, when, when, when you do this on your company. For the risk-free rate, I stayed with the most updated numbers. I looked at the Wall Street Journal at the time of the valuation, came up with the 10-year bond rate. That's a 1.62%. Now for the options, the original 10K options I got out of the 10K on page 71. So if you go to page 71 of the 10K, 
you'll see the options outstanding as of September 24th of 2011. 11,866 average strike price, average maturity. That's what you see reported as my option the last 10K. In the most recent 10Q, those options have been updated. And if you go to the 10Q on page 17 of the 10Q, you'll see that the options have been updated to reflect where Apple is at on June 30th of 2012. Would I love to know how many options are outstanding as of October 3rd of 2012? Sure. But you know, I, this is the best I can do. And here again, if you want to make an approximation of how many options, you have a company that issues lots of options and changes the number constantly, you might update the numbers. Here I left it at the June 17th, uh, I'm sorry, the page 17 for the 10Q, the June 30th of 2012 numbers as my updated numbers. That's pretty much it. And if you go back to my input sheet, those are the numbers that are driving my valuation. So what you see under Apple in that first first sheet are the updated numbers. I'll save you the suspense. If you go to the valuation output, based on my updated numbers, the value that I get for Apple as a company is about $760. Now you can tweak the numbers, change them. But here's what I'm going to be watching for. In about a month and a half, the most recent 10K will be out. I'll go back and review my numbers. And at that stage, I will actually have a 10K that's the most recent financial statement for this company. We can't, however, have the luxury of saying we'll do valuation only for a month and a half after you get the most recent annual report. You have to be willing to update numbers. So my suggestion is use the information you have. Even if you're in a country where you don't get full quarterly statements, update what you can estimate what you cannot and move on. You still want a valuation of your company as of right now, not as of January 1st of 2012 or June 30th of 2012. You want a valuation as of right now. I hope this, this session helped and the best way to make sure you get this is to pick a real company and do this on your own. Good luck.